Hey guys, Dr. Corey here at the Diet Doc. These sessions, always fun, I think. <laughs> I may have a lot more fun than you. <laughs> we always take a topic related to being human, right? Dissecting it a little bit. It could be something related to relationships. It could be something related to goal pursuit. A lot of times it is. It could be something related to self-control or lack thereof, self-sabotage maybe. Ultimately, it comes down to motivation, right? That level of energy that we are carrying with us every day that contributes to our sense of vitality and uh, gives us that oomph to pursue our goals with purpose, to pursue life in general. Um, with a sense of passion. Um, ultimately, we want to be, I use the word flourishing a lot. And uh, what really contributes to that is um, being able to have very robust relationships in our lives, a, a sense of meaning, um, utilizing our strengths projects us uh, towards that direction. Um, so when we recognize what our strengths are and then we actively and deliberately use them in our lives to pursue our goals, then we're getting closer and closer to that high level of motivation and sense of well-being. All right, guys, so today the topic is empathy. I want to give you guys three ways to be empathic because I think that most people do it wrong <laughs> and it's kind of a big deal. What we end up doing is creating division rather than intimacy. Ultimately, that's what we want when we express empathy, right? So first, um, let's go here. Empathy is an acknowledgement of another person's experience, okay? So for example, let's, let's take this example. A client comes to me and says, Corey, I'm having such a difficult time being consistent with tracking my food. I can stay on track for three days and then it all falls apart. Okay. Empathy would sound something like this. Man, I can, I can hear your frustration. It sounds like you really kill it for th the first part of the week. Three days is an awesome amount of consistency. So what happens after that? Notice guys that I did not say, here's what I did not say. <laughs> I did not say, I understand. I did not say, it'll be okay. I didn't say, I bet you'll do better next week. And I didn't say, well, maybe we should stop tracking. <laughs> Guys, empathy is acknowledgement. Empathy is not advice giving. That The A of acknowledgement works. The A of advice giving does not. Because what ends up happening is that when we give advice, we're going to leave the person feeling dismissed. We're going to leave the person feeling unheard. And we're going to leave the person feeling misunderstood. I have been in this position before. <laughs> It happened recently to me, and I, I, I was, I was kind of like, I didn't have any words for it. I actually just felt like crying. <laughs> and yes, guys, you, those of you who know me, I'm, I'm emotional. I'm pretty darn sensitive. But in that moment, I was like, I couldn't, I wasn't getting my need met. I didn't feel like that person got me in that moment. Okay, so when we express empathy correctly and in a way that bridges rather than divides, what we can usually see and watch this. Watch this when you try it, okay? What we'll usually see is the person across from us relax a little bit, okay? Shoulders come down, their face softens, okay? Their voice is lower, there isn't like this sense of moving in and kind of defensiveness and getting louder because when that happens, what they're trying to do is get you to understand and listen, <laughs> okay? So we, if we're seeing a person across from us bristle 
and get really rigid, we need to practice doing empathy differently. All right? Number two. Empathy is honest, all right? And it oftentimes will include some self-disclosure, okay? Fancy therapist term for sharing yourself. So here's what I mean. Let's take the same example, okay? Remember, my client said, hey, Corey, I'm having a really difficult time being consistent with tracking my food. I can do it really well for three days and then it all falls apart. So empathy, if I'm being honest and I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw out a little bit of my own story, right? Self-disclosure. It may sound like this, dude, I can tell you're frustrated. You do so well for three days and then it gets to where it sounds like it feels pretty chaotic, huh? I have, I've definitely had periods during my weight loss pursuits when I've experienced something similar, I think. So when I was moving across the country and I was still working on my dissertation and I was starting a brand new job, I barely felt like I could hold it together. I, like only for so long, for short periods of time. And then I would end up thinking like, God, something's got to give. Again, guys, what did I not do there? I didn't give any advice. I didn't give any advice at all. And I didn't say, like, it'll get better. It'll change. You know, I didn't dismiss what she was telling me. So I acknowledged her emotion. All right. That's super important with empathy. You've got to get under the person's, just the words dive underneath and get to what is the person feeling. If you guys are coaches, you got to know this stuff. You got to practice the skill. Dive underneath just the words and get to the emotion. That's what's going to help a person feel heard, understood, and like you get them, okay? Um, and then I shared a story, right? I shared a story about something that went on in my life. And why did I do that? Because I need her to know, I need her to get the sense that she's not alone, okay? She is not the first person to have to deal with something this difficult. And as I've told you guys in previous videos, you know, we tend to have this sense that no one would understand because we're the only one dealing with it, right? No one would get it. And so when you, when you share a little bit of your own story, that can help to, again, bridge the distance instead of divide, all right? So we've gone to two ways to be empathic, all right? Here's the third. Empathy opens the person up to a new level of self-reflection, okay? This is one of the big keys to being empathic. It puts the other person on a path Okay, of self-discovery. It gives them a space to where they can come to new conclusions for themselves uh, after kind of feeling safe enough with you to kind of sift through other perspectives, okay? And that's why like when you share a personal story, that opens up th that space a little bit for them to be like, huh. They kind of get out of their own heads for a little bit and they see that there may be another way to think about this. So, okay, again, let's use the same example. Corey, I'm having such a difficult time being consistent with tracking my food. I can do it for three days really well and then it all falls apart. Okay, so remember how in the first example I said, so what happens next? I involved her in a conversation, okay, rather than just saying something like, well, what if you tried planning your food out the night before so you already know what you're going to eat and you know what, then it won't be a problem. Okay, that may be a really good strategy, but not for me to give her in this situation. 
Okay. <laughs> Again, I am minimizing her experience. So, again, advice giving. So here's what might work better. Remember, empathy is, it's, it's trusting that the individual across from you has the answers. Not that you have the answers and not that you have to try to come up with the answers to fix whatever problem they're talking about, okay? So I can tell you're frustrated. Do you want to discuss ideas about what might help you get past those three days? Okay. <laughs> Acknowledging the feeling again, but then allowing the person the ability to give themselves and you permission to have a conversation about it, to discuss ideas if that's what they really want. Sometimes that's not what they want. Sometimes they just want to complain. And that's okay. Now, if you're a coach, I think you have an obligation to oftentimes be like, mm, okay, let's take five. <laughs> I can tell you're frustrated and I want to honor that this is feeling really difficult for you. You know what? Let's take five minutes. Complain all you want. Scream, cry, moan, whine. I don't care. Do it. We all kind of need the space to be able to get out our frustration like that. And then can we reconvene and come back together to come up with some, some ideas? What, how's that sound? Some ideas for being more empathic, doing it the right way. Remember to bridge, not divide. The ultimate goal with empathy, guys, you know what? We don't want to create a split. No, we want to create greater intimacy. We want to create vulner more vulnerability. Now, as I'm thinking, I want to give you guys one more idea. <laughs> Bonus! <laughs> okay, so look at empathy as a mirror. You become the mirror for your friends, for your clients, any relationship that you're in. So you're the mirror. So if my client continues to come to me saying the same thing, repeatedly, Corey, I'm having so much trouble being consistent. Corey, I can't be consistent. How'd the weekend go? Corey, I just couldn't be consistent. I can express empathy by again saying, dude, I can feel your frustration. I, <laughs> it is loud and clear. This is hard, isn't it? But can I share something with you that I've noticed? And then I'm going to pause, guys, because I want to give my client the opportunity to say, well, yeah, please. Or to say, no, which I don't think has ever happened, <laughs> okay? Because they generally trust you and they want someone to understand them and they need someone to be their guide. So I might say something like, you know, this is something that I hear you say just about every week. And honestly, I see very little movement towards the use of other strategies that we've talked about. And it pains me because I want to see you succeed. I really want to see you move forward. I want to, I want to see that confidence in you build. I want to see you progress. Is there something that is there something that I can do differently to support you in a better way? Because I really, again, I want to see you succeed. So if it's support from me, tell me. If it's support outside of this relationship that that you're not getting, or if you're feeling some sort of um, pushback from other people in your life and that's causing trouble, like share that with me, tell me about it. Because then, you know, if I'm aware of what those barriers are, then I can, I can better help you. Um, and we can get to the bottom of them together. So guys, this fourth one, this is where you're the mirror. Oftentimes as coaches, as friends in, in a relationship, you know, we have to say the things that we often don't want to say because 
we may feel like this could cause some conflict. <laughs> Except when we do it in a very uh, considerate, careful way, the response that we'll usually see from the other person is, wow, I really appreciate your honesty. You know, uh, I hadn't thought about it that way before. And they may not like to hear what you say. It doesn't feel good, but they know they need it. And you didn't do it in a critical way or a blaming or a shaming way. So guys, in this instance, this was an open invitation, okay, for her to reflect. And you know, I'm inviting her to come in and say, wow, okay, um, actually, yeah, there are some things happening that I haven't shared with you, and maybe we can work on them together. Uh, and she would never say that if I hadn't acted in an empathic way that gave her the sense that she could trust me, okay? So it allows a person to get real with you. So for you guys, remember, you know, the person across from you, they may not have anyone else in their lives who's gonna call them out, call them out, remember, in a safe, trusting, careful, considerate way, and at the same time stick with them, right? We've had plenty of people in our lives probably who have called them out and then been like, do your thing. Like, I'm not going to be a part of this. So, you know, you get this message that, you know, you suck and, you know, they'll throw something on you, but then they'll reject you. So, it, again, if you're a coach out there, and you know what? Most of us are in a coaching type relationship if we have really good friendships and relationships in our lives. I mean, let's be honest here. We need to be the mirrors in a very empathic way. So guys, all right, I gave you four ways to be empathic because some of you, maybe not all of you, maybe most of you are actually doing it right, but I think a lot of people do it incorrectly. Number one, okay, way to be empathic is to acknowledge, not advice give, okay? Don't get the two A's misconstrued. Number two, to be honest and use a little bit of self-disclosure, okay? But don't dominate the conversation with your own story because this is not about you, it's about the other person. <laughs> Number three, is to open the person up to a new level of self-reflection by asking an open-ended question to get them to explore a bit more, okay? because It can become a process of self-discovery instead of just being stuck in whatever feeling they're bringing to you or the behavior that they're not happy with. And then number four would be to use empathy like you're a mirror in the relationship to say, you know, can I share something with you that I've been noticing and give them the opportunity to say yes uh, and to invite your feedback. Thanks guys, take care, have an awesome day. Here's to motivation.